kết cơ Okay, I think we can stop. We are four minutes late, so that's okay. Feeling acceptable. <coughs> okay, thank you everybody for being there this early in the morning <laughs> after yesterday's picnic. Um, so my name is Frédéric Rosa, for, no, for those who know, don't, don't know me uh, already. Um, I've been involved in known for 15 years this year, uh, and uh, for a few years, for some years, I've been working at Novel Souza. And these days, I'm uh, enterprise desktop release manager, which means a guy who is trying to get out some uh, release done with the profit. Um, so today, uh, I will be uh, talking about. Uh, GNOME 3, the GNOME 3 in the enterprise context, and how we try to make an enterprise test of it uh, in the latest uh, ent major enterprise release of SUS Enterprise in use, so T12. So we had one rule for uh, C12 is our mojo, and it was not only for the desktop, for, but for most of the stuff we were shipping, one, let's say, one application per task. Let's not try to ship 20 different things doing the same thing, uh, but quite more or less, but just one, if possible, uh, and, do, and making sure it's, it's done properly, it works great. So we were an extremist, so we are still shipping v, VI and Emax. It's, this was ruled out of exception allowed, VI and Emax. But for the desktop, we decided to only ship GNOME 3. We evaluate the various desktop. So we, we, we were shipping until C12 uh, KD4 and GNOME 2. two, two dot 32, if I remember correctly. Uh, and so we evaluate both, and in the end, we decided to ship the 3. And also, uh, we added another uh, light, they call it light desktop, which is SWM. So it's very light. Uh, we were already using it for our installer. And it had it was able to cope with some specific use case like embedded like uh, use case or when you are doing some uh, kiosk like application where people don't don't need a desktop experience so it was good enough for 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 this use case and we although we are not shipping uh, KD uh, supported it. It's available from the open source build service as an add-on, but it's not supported. It's up to people to install. Uh, let's say that initially the reaction was mixed, but we, when we explain to people, to customers, that we we have the choice. Either we try to do two things and barely, not barely, but try to cope with them or we just ship one desktop and we make sure it's great, they understood. But 
we had a challenge. We had to replace slab. So who knows or who remember what slab is? So people from Susan are not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> so three people. So let's go back in time a bit. So I have a screenshot here. It's not great, but you can still get, get it. So Slav was uh, a development done by the Novel User Experience, based on Novel User Experience research. Uh, we were discussing with Scott this morning, I think it was 10 years ago, so grossly. Um, and it was integrated in, in the Novel and then through the desktop uh, known experience uh, on all the enterprise desktop. The idea was to have a desktop which would look like uh, uh, familiar to uh, <coughs> users who, who are used to Windows. And so, as you can see, it was integrating a lot of things uh, in, uh, in the main menu. Favorite application, last started application, search with something called Deagle, also to remember that, the thing which was eating your CPU every morning. But it's great. But it was great. Fortunately, Tracker is doing much better these days. Um, at least I don't hear any complaints anymore that Tracker is chewing my CPU like bubblegum. Um, and all, all other nice things. So, you had a system, uh, system monitor, uh, network monitor. So we, we had to migrate our user from this desktop experience to uh, GNOME 3 experience. So we had several options. We could have migrated them directly to GNOME Shell. But we had the feeling it could be a bit difficult uh, to sell that. So I am on purpose, I'm putting the overview, but you, you get that switching from a top panel, uh, a bottom panel with, you click, you get um, uh, a menu-like Windows XP 7, not 8, fortunately, but yeah, you, you get it, to uh, the GNOME Shell uh, experience directly, so people just upgrade their desktop. Mm. We were not convinced it would be great. Uh, we were expecting a lot of pushback. And since uh, we were only shipping one desktop, they couldn't say, oh, let's switch to KDE. No. And ISWM is, <sighs> it's good as a light alter alternative, but we wouldn't want to have it as a default on, all, on everybody's desktop. So we know that. Uh, we and I, I'm fond of GNOME Shell, don't get me wrong. The uh, point is not to, uh, to say that the design of GNOME Shell is not good for us. It's just that we have to migrate people from one ex user experience to another. We are hoping that people will shift, switch to uh, GNOME Shell user experience. But we couldn't uh, shift this user experience by default and not migrate users to this. So we had another possibility, GNOME Classic. So GNOME Classic, uh, it's all already, it was already shipped or was going to be shipped in, in UL7. So we, we looked at it, so it was good. Uh, it has a, it was, for, for users I would say, they would feel kind of familiar with it. Uh, it's not completely different from where they were coming from. But still, uh, we had the feeling that uh, it would be still too different from what, where they were coming from. Because GNOME Classic had a design which was trying to mimic what GNOME 2 upstream was uh, shipping. But unfortunately, we were not in CLE uh, and shipping the upstream uh, design of GNOME 2, uh, we were shipping slab. Yeah. 
coping with our legacy. So what we did is uh, we looked at non-classic and we modified it in, in a way so that it could be suitable for people coming from slab uh, to GNOME 3. So as I said, classic was to replace upstream deep layout to panel, slab was a Windows replacement at that time. And again, changing the layout, we would get a lot of complaints. So what we did is uh, we did what we call C Classic. Um, so let me get out of the presentation just to show you what it looks like in, in real. So uh, sorry for the projector, which is cutting a bit the, the thing, but yeah, it's really boring enough. Um, so it's very similar to Glum Classic. It's based on Glum Classic. What we did is we merged the two panels. Um, we disabled a few things. So you can try to guess what we disabled or what we changed. The app menu. The, the app menu? Yeah. Yeah, right. What is your t-shirt size? <laughs> I have medium. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, it's, you, you notice it, it, it's, it's a designer who, who wants a price. <laughs> So, the app menu, what else? The hot corner. The hot corner. Uh, we, kept it. we were wondering what to do with the app corner because we could have moved it top, uh, on the bottom, but it would have conflicted with uh, the message tray. And we were thinking, okay, we can keep it there, most people might not discover it directly, but that's, that's okay, because uh, in a way, okay, uh, microphone was getting, yeah, should be better. Uh, in a way, uh, it's, for our, our user, it was kind of an expert uh, feature. Uh, it's really core to uh, Gnome Shell experience, but to classic, it's, I would say less cool. So it was okay to keep it, but if they discover it, nice. If they don't discover it, okay. So what else? Yeah. Icons on the desktop, yes, but it's also on classic. No t shirt for you. <laughs> well, you, you can speak to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the launcher? No, no, no. The, the uh, icon launcher. Uh, we don't have. Oh, you're asking for things removed from the shell. Things which yeah. is which are different from ah, classic, classic, from yeah. non-classic. <laughs> okay, I can open stuff if you want. Yeah. <laughs> so you shift a new menu. We have this as a menu. Okay, we have. So it's based on 3.10. 3.10 with some backport from 3.12. We wanted to have no 3.12 or 3.12, but it was a bit uh, not right on the schedule. It would have been great. Kernel 3.12, no 3.12, 3.12, marketing would have been it. <laughs> but we could. So let me, uh, let me tell you a bit what, what, we, what we did. So we had to patch a few things in GNOME itself, um, like the arrow direction. <laughs> it's hard-coded. We had to patch that in GNOME Shell. Um, what else did you have to patch? OK, uh, it was still in 3.12, at least. Um, we 
a slight modification, the favorite menu, it's on the top in non classic. But we moved it onto at the bottom in uh, in Sleep, Sleep Classic because it would be the first thing user hit with their mouse. Otherwise, they would have to go up, so it would be and then have to favorite. So just a small change. So activity overview is uh, just like uh, non classic. It's you are you are going there, so nothing nothing different. Uh, we disable the application uh, menu as you as you noticed. We, what else did we do? Did we do? Uh, the clock is moved uh, on a corner, it's not in the center of the screen. Uh, and over there, so we had to backport a few things from 312, 312 like uh, um, wired, uh, the Ethernet wired thing, because it was not displayed at that time in 310. And one thing we, we change is uh, in usually in uh, classic or in non shell you don't have logout you just have this and we noticed uh, during the beta test that people didn't know how to do I logout so we we inserted it I I would uh, accept from a designer perspective yeah but now you have logout and logout. It's completely crazy, but it was a way we could have also tried to have this always open by default. But it would have in a, um, so, so the entire menu, menu would have been too big. So we use that as a trade-off. I f think it's it's acceptable. Um, so coming back to um, our solution, what did we do? Merge two panel in one. Disable the application menu uh, to make sure that the experience was uh, still good. Uh, we and by we I mean Federico uh, did a lot of backport of uh, GTK 3.12 and 3.10 to make sure that uh, appli uh, GTK application using uh, GTK app um, could have their menu back in the in the main application when they were not running under uh, GNOME Shell. So for that, we also had to tweak a bit uh, GNOME settings demon because the default detection in GTK is if you are uh, running under GNOME Shell, then you have an application menu. And if you are running under whatever else, you don't have one. But we are running under GNOME Shell, but under Sleep Classic. Ooh. So Again, some, some slight changes. Um, modifi modifying Windows decoration, it's just to use the same Windows decoration as in uh, non classic, meaning having a maximize and minimize uh, button. And to do that, uh, as I said, unfortunately, we had to uh, fork uh, non classic code and to patch non shell. Um, not a lot of patches, but um, we had to patch GNOME Shell to allow a single panel, and as I said, change arrow direction. Uh, we were wondering about not putting any arrows, but uh, if I remember correctly, during the beta test, people were not always thinking, oh, I can click on that. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, and we had to patch GNOME Shell extension to move uh, the favorite menu. But we are shipping Sleep Classic, but we are still shipping GNOME Shell experience, user experience, because we, we think that some customer might want to use it, uh, not by default, I mean, we are not shipping it by default, but it's available, and we know that it's also much better for some uh, specific uh, use case, like all those hybrid laptop. I'm not speaking about tablet because I think it's still we still have a, we GNOME, the GNOME project have a lot to do on tablet, but uh, hybrid laptop uh, GNOME Shell is uh, much better than uh, Sleep Classic or GNOME Classic. Uh, you have huge buttons that you can interrupt with 
with your fingers and so that's why we, we, were, we are still shipping non-shell non and we are also shipping non-classic. Uh, initially we were wondering uh, should we patch non-classic and so that it detects that uh, you put a G setting somewhere and yeah it's going to go crazy and and act like Slee Classic, and if you disable this G settings, it's going back to ups upstream behavior, but we thought, you no, know, uh, it's going to be crazy. It's much better to have three different choice in, uh, in GDM, so that you can easily switch between the, the three experiences. Uh, one thing I forgot, if you have any question at any time, just ask. What else did we do? Uh, yes? You also for for all uh, customers. You you support all three equally. Like you, yep. You have the same. You have three calls, two I guess. Yeah. All right. So far, uh, all the um, the bugs we got were either in um, bugs in uh, in classic, which is share. Uh, not much, and yeah, no, no, we. I don't remember seeing any bugs on, on GNOME shell experience or, or GNOME classic itself. So it was kind of either shared across all the desktop or yeah. So what? What is your t-shirt size? Uh, it's very small. Small. Well, it depends. Is it like an American small or? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> okay. Oops. Thank you. Um. So what? What did we patch? Uh, we discovered during beta tests that uh, our users were not extremely happy with the shield and the way to lift up the shield. Even more when they were on a VM. Because although we are doing a, a desktop thing, this desktop is also available on uh, on the server, on the edition, and a lot of customers um, are installing their server in VMs, and those who are coming from uh, Windows tend to still install um, a desktop on a server. Also, because sometimes you need a desktop to install third-party application, application which are not packaged like Oracle, which ship with uh, Java, graphical installer on all creating all platforms. So um, we our beta test told us told her that mm, yeah we have to click and go up and yeah it's not great. So what we did is um, we slightly modified the shield to automatically lift when you moved your mouse, not a, not just oh, just a small move, but 100 pixels. So it means that it's active enough, uh, but that's okay. Um, and so people stopped complaining about the, what is this shield thing. Um, and so, yeah, so that's something I don't know if uh, we could move that. Uh, to upstream because it's changing the user experience. Uh, it's not, uh, the, the upstream behavior is great when you have a touch screen because you really, it's really like an Android or something like that. But with a mouse, uh, I'm not sure. So it's up to, up to discussion. You had a, had a It's yeah. not a question, mm -hmm. just I had the same feedbacks for users. Okay. Okay. So we, we need to, uh, to to start a discussion on that. One thing, you know that the shield is automatically lift if you uh, press any button. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but the problem is that people don't know that. Yeah, okay. So it would be like, oh, start typing your password or just press a, a key. But I think it was not even doing, it's not doing that if you press uh, uh, control or alt because those are dead keys, no, those are modifiers, I'm not 100% sure. So, yeah, 
That's. Um, yep. I, I seem to recall like Windows 8 or even Windows 10 does the same issue. Okay. I, I, I don't know, I haven't installed, uh, so the question was, uh, uh, Sri was wondering, he, he seems to remember that Windows 8 or 10 has a similar shield behavior, uh, but that would be have to, to, to double check. So, yeah. so Windows 8 is behaving like Okay, so. Um, in, it, it was actually quite surprising when I, when I saw this that um, no free and Windows 8 behavior is exactly the same in this particular area. So when people were saying that, well, we cannot migrate from Windows uh, to GNOME, that, that was kind of strange experience. If they were migrating from Windows 8, even the shortcuts work the same. That's, that's great because now I have a good uh, argument to, to continue shipping the GNOME Shell experience. We have Sli Classic for Windows XP people, or Windows Vista people, and now we have no shell for uh, Windows 8, Windows 7. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, even the whole thing of needing an overview of the kind of yeah. now is a, is, a, is a Windows experience. But Windows 10 got back to an experience more similar to what we're presenting. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's because... They copied us. Yeah. No, that's, that's because the overview was full of panels. They were trying to integrate an internet experience in their panel. and. We didn't do that. Yeah. The, the, the idea that if you move mouse uh, for some distance, then you kind of do the discovery of yeah. what's behind the shield is, I think, is great. Like it's definitely there's a pain point if you're on laptop without the touch screen. That, that, that's exactly especially, the yeah, kind especially of. if you're dealing with VMs and the graphics in VMs, where you don't really have any other means. Uh, besides the mouse, and sometimes it's really hard to handle. At one point, we were wondering about completely disabling uh, you know, the, the shield if you, we were the testing you were on the VM. But then, since we also use a lot of VM to do QA, to open QA, it would have completely disrupt uh, the user experience, the default user experience. So, so um, yep. I did. I don't remember 3.10, I don't know when they introduced this behavior, but they had an arrow that sort of that animated upwards. Uh, Let's see. My experience yeah, in the field is that the arrows, even if they like uh, it's there. move yeah. now, it, it doesn't help. Like, it doesn't so help first, it's, uh, it's, it's, take, it's not always there, because of course we are not doing the, to do crazy animation and use CPU and whatever, but even People don't, people don't figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So now you see my password. Okay, um, let's continue. What else did we do? Uh, we we patched a bit uh, non control center. So it was already a patch uh, by our uh, open source friends to add uh, some additional external uh, application in it. Why we did that, uh, let me show you. We spent, I spent a lot of time trying to clean up the menu by default. So it's not a default installation, but it's quite, uh, looks like a default installation, to keep something like some sun dry. Because I can tell you that our PM people, when they go, what is this sun dry thing? We can ship a product with something called sun dry. So, uh, and most of the things there were like um, Java, so let me show you, okay, um, IST Web Control Panel, Deconf Editor, uh, Tweak UI, Main Menu Editor, Tracker, kind of this, those things. So we, we were thinking, okay, let's have Let's make sure that all user, all user, when they want to configure something, go just in one specific place. This place would be called all settings. It's not known control center. It's bet much better that up, up, we upstream call it up all settings because this way people are not, oh, I need to go there and there and there and there. So we had to modify a bit uh, 
uh, num control center just to be able to start some uh, specific additional application. Uh, they are not integrated in uh, in, uh, in no control center like regular panel. They they are started at another application. And also one thing we do is uh, we have YAST or uh, system uh, configuration uh, tool, which is started as um, another application, and there we are using. Oh, oh yeah. There, it's something you might remember. It's a previous. It's a fork version of Gnome Control Center UI, which was done a long time ago by uh, the. Uh, yes, people, and so we are still using that. Uh, we were wondering to port it to the latest UI, but it's probably not sure it's worth it. Because it, this stuff is not moving at all, it's just a launcher of uh, other application. So. Um, okay. 15 minutes left. What else did we do? Uh, we try to migrate some settings from KDE. The main thing we did is uh, we wrote an importer in Evolution so that people running uh, KML, uh, first time they would start Evolution, Evolution would be able to import that uh, KML uh, email data to, uh, to Evolution. This has been upstream already. Uh, we had to disable some, some stuff in uh, Gnome Control Center network panel because uh, we are not shipping, we are shipping network manager on SLED, on the desktop uh, product, but we are not shipping it on SLES. On SLES we are shipping uh, another uh, network uh, system which is called Wicked, uh, which is, uh, which was written before Network D was uh, started by uh, our beloved system D folks, uh, but it has some similar ideas as uh, Network D, and that's the way uh, Network is configured on on SLES. Uh, unfortunately, if you are not using Network Manager, but you go in the Network uh, uh, Configuration UI in GCC. Um, you get first a pop-up that oh, Network Manager is not running. Yes, I know. Don't tell me. Uh, and then it would be nice to not be able to try to configure a VPN, bonding, whatever, because they are done for uh, for network manager. So what we do is we are not now doing a runtime check uh, of whether uh, network manager is running or not. And if it's not running, we're just hiding a few UI elements so that you can still configure your proxy because this is not bound to a network manager. No, Wicked is configured through Yast, uh, and so maybe in the future we might try to uh, to have it. Uh, it has a Dbus API, but it's not the same as the Network Manager API. It would have been nice. Uh, maybe it will evolve in the future. We'll see. Another thing we did, and I think our friends at Red Hat know this pain but it's more recent. Uh, we were crazy to forward port GNOME 310 to UPower 1.0. Um, because at that, at that time, GNOME 3.10 was still using UPower 0.8, something like that, um, or 0.9. Um, and then there was UPower 1.0, which was almost released. Um, I was trying to ask Bastian and Richard, could you do a release, please? Um, but we thought that, yeah, let's try. We know that the API and ABI is going to change. We are starting a new major uh, enterprise product. It would be great if we could try to not have to deprecate API in the next service pack. Uh, so we jumped and uh, <coughs> My course uh, spent a lot of time in doing a forward port of GNOME 3.10 on the UPower 1.0 so that when we rebase our desktop in the future, uh, we don't have to rebase UPower. It's already there. So it was 
it was a good move. Do you recommend doing it? Do you guys adjust that inside of the village? I'm going to talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, yeah, yeah, Bluezy, uh, we didn't do that. Uh, Bluezy files? Yeah, yeah, we are shipping Bluezy files. Yeah. So, uh, but it's not about, just about the desktop. We discovered that GNOME 3 is asking a lot to graphic card, in case you didn't notice, compared to GNOME 2. And I'm not talking about compies and strange windows going in all directions. Uh, unfortunately, on the enterprise world, not everything is running with OpenGL accelerated. You have people running in VM. You have strange architecture, such as Power, uh, so, uh, Z, ZVM, S390, yeah, you know, those main frames, that it's still alive. Um, or PowerPC, PPC64LE, uh, which has some kind of Radeon gra graphic card, but yeah. You have the remote desktop also. So, fortunately, there is something called LLVM pipe. So, with that, uh, we were able to, at the cost of using more CPU, of course, uh, we were able to to have GNOME 3 uh, usable. But then we discovered uh, that oh, sometimes um, every any change on the screen was causing full screen update. And Federico uh, and Hans Peter spent some big chunk of time in debugging LLVM by Mesa, Clutter, Coggle, yeah, to fix that. Uh, so, uh, of course, everything is upstream now. So we are all benefiting from, from that, but yeah. It was something that we, uh, as a community, we were not really spending a lot of time on. <laughs> but, we still have some remaining issues. The remote display story, it's not completely there yet. We discovered, and it was discovered, after the final release of this world, not during the beta test, it would have been too easy. We have some customers which are connecting on our desktop using X11 from Windows. Yes. X11 from Windows. And when you try to connect with an old X11 stack on a GNOME 3 tester with a recent X stack, ooh, the experience is less than optimal. You get a black screen at GDM. Why? Because these days, GDM is displayed using GNOME Shell. So it wants the latest and greatest ex ex extensions. And if you are running an old X server which doesn't have those extensions, you don't see anything. You don't even see that, oh, you are running a too old X server. So we are working on trying to fix that. At least fix that. Better cope with that than, rather than just the black screen. Uh, so we will probably try to improve GNOME, se GNOME session, so to have the big fail wave, um, the big fail screen to display it and, and at least tell you the oh by the way your X uh, stuff is really old and you might want to upgrade. But they will still have a big problem. There is no X server on Windows at the moment, which is up to date. Uh, there are some versions which are uh, free, but they are not up to date. They don't have all the latest extension, X fixes or X input, uh, and even the commercial ones, not not there yet. Uh, we are working. Uh, our uh, parent company, Microfocus, has a product, uh, X, uh, Reflection X, which is an X server uh, for Windows, but they are still working on it. So, yeah. So, so you're saying this is a quite a wide, widespread issue? I wouldn't say widespread, um, because 
Yeah, I would say it's kind of a legacy thing. Customers tend to not want to migrate too much. Uh, and, oh, it was working. Why does I have to change everything? Uh, fortunately, we have good arguments to tell them to switch to something else. We tell them, switch to VNC. Because we, 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 <coughs> with VNC, uh, you'll get a faster experience. Because even locally, if you are right now, if you are running two recent de desktop and do X11 remote, uh, it's deadly slow. For just an application, it's okay. For the full desktop, it's slow because X doesn't do any caching. So every time you move a Windows, uh, you can see almost all the frames going over the wires. And when I, it's slow on an Ethernet cable. I'm not even talking of dialer. So, and with VNC, you don't have those problems. Fortunately, we killed dialer. <laughs> <laughs> but you 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 get you get what I mean. So we are we are trying to move people to to VNC or RDP. Uh, we have so it's better with VNC. There is caching. We can also tell them if you are using XDMCP, you don't have any encryption. So it's also something uh, which which is better. We are trying now uh, with our ne next service pack to ship our, all our VNC server with encryption available with the same uh, TLS encryption that is used uh, in uh, DPF so that we can have something which is common across all desktop and I mean across not desktop but all uh, all distribution whatever rail SUS whatever yep question oh so is performance ground shell on uh, VNC pretty good or so, so the question was, uh, how is the performance of known shell over VNC? It's quite decent. Uh, it's good. It's, it, uh, I've used it even over uh, DSL lines, and it's OK. Uh, it's, it's usable. So it, we are probably not as fast as something like no machine uh, stuff, which is amazing. Uh, I've seen demos over. Uh, Wi-Fi in a conference has much, much worse of Wi-Fi than we have here over an iPad of a GNOME desktop and it was like... It's typical in the oil exploration industry. Yeah. When you have um, data centers with uh, clusters that crunch the numbers and the actual um, desktops where scientists are looking at the um, cubes and rotating things might be thousands of kilometers away from that. So no machine is, is something that yeah. many are using to to get the uh, op OpenGL traffic compressed and sent over. It's quite uh, normal. Like 10 years ago, this was almost almost a standard in the industry. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's, it's proper service these days. Well, th there is a uh, free annex, but uh, the question yeah, is that like in Wayland... The problem is free annex uh, was based on an old version of no machine. Now they have completely re rewrite the entire stuff, which is no longer uh, open source. But uh, are you guys uh, looking into something, some alternative to VNC for the future? Or At the moment, no. no. Uh, because I, maybe Spice could be something, but... I, I I know you guys are, are, are looking at that and uh, as a 3D acceleration or all that also. But for now, uh, that is not an industry standard. And honestly, I wouldn't want to create yet another protocol or whatever. So uh, let's see uh, how SPAS goes uh, in that direction. Yep. So one of the Western guys have made an extension to Western. One of the Western guys have made an extension to, to, support, support, to support RDP. Oh. Uh, so it might be interesting to look at that and see how we could get that into the you know, shell. Yep. Uh, so there is also a Western extension uh, to VNC. VNC. Yeah, uh, the real VNC people 
they did a composition oh, yeah, based yeah, on for Western uh, last year, uh, which which is exporting to VNC. So that's something. Yeah, definitely the, the desktop remote desktop story uh, for Wayland. Uh, we'll have to think about it. Okay, uh, almost time to close. Uh, so for GNOME Shell, what we still have, um, still a work in progress, API-wise, mostly about the extensions. Um, uh, we have a buff uh, on Monday morning about, let's try to get uh, Essential as first, uh, first uh, citizen in, uh, in our uh, desktop experience because we have breakage, uh, our upgrade story is not there. Um, and I think, uh, I know the, you, uh, Red Hat people, for your next enterprise version, you are upgrading the desktop. We are going to do the same next year. And I think we both have to, have to deal with um, how to cope with upgrading extensions for our, our customer. <laughs> it's going to be, to be fun. Um, yeah, so uh, please join the board. Yep. And One other thing, uh, just talking about updates. One thing I'm quite interested in at the moment is updates from the user experience point of view as well. Like um, if there are, say, design changes within uh, a stable release somehow, how do we present those to users? Yeah. Um, we provide guidance for them because I think a lot of the time when we get hurt by design changes, it's not so much that the changes are bad, but that we provide little to no guidance or warning about what's happening. Like, yep. And you know, we get this all the time on our phones and on the web. Like, hey, we've got a new website. Here's how it works. Isn't this great? And, and some people might complain, but most people see it as a positive thing. So I don't know. I I think we can. I think part of the, the issue here is how we communicate with users, and there's yep. some work we can do on infrastructure to enable us to do that. And, and we also have, to, on a more general basis, uh, discoverability of, of feature, uh, alt, alt to alt tab differences in the shell. If, you, if nobody tells you about it, you are not going to discover it by yourself. I have designs to fix that. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, yeah, so our own work in progress is we, are, we will rebase the classic to a more recent uh, desktop, either 3.16 or 3.18, and we'll ship this desktop in, the, in service pack 2 of uh, SLE, SLE 12, uh, and it will be also, we'll try to get it in uh, OpenSUSE Leap, which is a new name of the OpenSUSE release, and double with uh, Crazy every always rolling release of OpenSUSE. Currently, it's only in SLE uh, because we had to patch uh, GNOME Shell and stuff like that. Uh, so we we'll, we we'll try to to work uh, with you guys uh, to try to merge the few things we had to to do so that we can ship SLE Classic. Maybe rename it as I don't know. Uh, Panel one panel classic or whatever, uh, and have, it would be nice to have it in, in the upstream extension uh, uh, catalog. And we well, we are wondering about, as you said, the de design changes. So I'm not too worried about uh, a new notification in design. I'm I just I'm just a bit worried about the tray icon handling uh, with the new design. Uh, I have to check. Uh, how, how it's going to, to work. Uh, honestly, I, I didn't have time to, uh, to check. So what's the trend? You know, the legacy, uh, when you have Spotify still running ah, somewhere. Yeah, it's when we put it at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing we are supposed to kill, but unfortunately, um, application writer, they don't always listen to us. And on enterprise stuff, it's even, yeah. OK, uh, we are out of time. Uh, but if you have question, I'm yeah. Let's try to take one question. Yep. So you say that non-cell extensions 
you think are um, like very important for for users for enterprise users or something like that? Like it you helps. really you really need um, uh, extensions in enterprise desktop or the point is that we were able to do C classic and non classic because we have the extensions because we are modifying the default shell experience, user experience with extensions. And also being able to say to people that if you are not completely happy with the user experience you get, uh, you can uh, tweak it with extensions. That's something which, which is helping a lot. Definitely. Uh, because as much as we, we want, uh, we try to do the best user experience we can uh, by default, uh, but um, allowing people to tweak it, you know, to tweak it a bit with extensions, it's, it's really nice. And, and Firefox had, if you remember in the beginning, Firefox modules was, it was awful because every new Firefox version was exploding extension in all directions. Uh, they were able to to get the story straight, and now they are doing a new release every six weeks, and you don't notice that because the first time it starts, it's going to download new version of extensions if it's needed, and it's completely smooth, and that's something we should try to go to head to. Yeah, but the thing is that if you want that, we need an API for it. Yes, if we that's want that, we need to, to we side. need to decide what we we. We need to to arrive at a point where we know what kind of API we, we want. Uh, maybe we can do it slowly. I mean, uh, there are some some core extension or some stuff that uh, rely on things, so we can try to extract from that what API are needed. And for other things, we we put them still in flux until we know that it's it's stable enough. Yep. Yeah. Other question. And then that's the last one, otherwise uh, Alexandre will kill me. But, uh, we'll, we'll have uh, extensions on okay. the system there. So, thank you, Frédéric. Thank you. And, uh, thank you. And for those who, who came and asked questions, if you